Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look how we could drive this display using a microcontroller. And the microcontroller that we're going to use is a PIC microcontroller on board the SCAMP 3 board. Now this is a 1.3 inch OLED display. It's connected up to the I2C bus. You can see the ground connection. You can see VCC, which could be 3.3 volts or 5 volts. Then we have the SCL and SDA lines. Now we could display eight lines of text on this display and I have some examples. You can see the first line is uppercase then I have some lowercase lines and then line six is an uppercase reverse so it's a uh, black text on white background and on the very bottom I have a uh, lowercase alphabet. Now this display is 128 pixels across by 64 pixels down and there's two driver ICs which drive this display it's the SSD 1306 or the SH-1106. Okay, here's a data sheet for the SSD-1306 display driver IC. And under features, you can see it can drive a 128 by 64 dot matrix panel, which we have. Now this uh, driver IC can handle page addressing and horizontal addressing. Okay, here's a data sheet for the SH-1106 display driver IC. If you look under features, you can see it could drive a 132 by 64 dot matrix panel. So it could drive a panel larger than ours. So it's going to try to turn on pixels that aren't there. So we have to make sure we have an offset in our code to make the display come out properly. Now this uh, driver IC, the SH1106, only has page addressing. Okay, next, we're going to have a look at some of the code functions running on the SCAM3 board. Now the code is written in fourth, so it's interactive, so there's no library, so I'm going from datasheet to code, and we're using direct register programming. So right now I have eight lines of text on my display, and I could erase any line, so I'm going to erase line two from my keyboard. I'll do it interactively, so I'll erase line two. Now I could actually type on my keyboard, and I could type text into line two, so I'll set that up. Okay, I'll start typing. You can see I'm typing letters in line two, and when I come to the end, it's going to wrap around, see it wraps around on itself. That's called page addressing. Now if it would jump down to the next line, that would be called horizontal addressing. So we could use this now for typing in text to see what it looks like before we do our main code, which comes in handy. So next I'm going to do a pixel test. We're going to check all pixels. I'm going to turn on all pixels. Okay, here comes the pixel test. So all the pixels are on, so it, it checks out okay. Okay, we're going to go back to normal. I'm doing this with the keyboard because it's interactive. So we're back to normal again. So next we're going to do a reverse. I'm going to reverse all the text. So here's all the text reversed. So we have black on a white background. And I'll put it back to normal. Okay, here it is normal. So we're back to normal. So next I'm going to flip the display in case we want to mount our display upside down. We could actually flip the display, so I'll do that. Okay, there's the display flipped and I can put it back and there we are back to normal. So that's some of the functions that we could use interactively using our keyboard. Okay next we're gonna have a look at a real application so right now I have some code that's monitoring the temperature sensor on board the SCAM3 board if I put my finger over the temperature sensor you can see it's changing and I have some cold spray I could spray the the temperature sensor with some cold spray we, we could watch it change and then she'll warm up. Okay my last demo is called mirror mode. Now to have a look at this display properly we need to look at it in the reflection of a mirror so I could do that I'll get a mirror and then we can look at this display properly. Okay have a mirror and we're looking at the reflection of the display in a mirror and it comes up properly. So you could get a magnifying mirror and it will actually magnify the size of the display. So if you need to do this and if you need a, a reflection off a mirror, you could uh, mirror the display and it will come out properly. Okay, here's the code running on the SCAM3 board and it's written in Flashforth and this is for the SH1106 display driver IC. Now when you write a program in Forth, you don't sit down and write your complete program. First of all, you write all your tools. Now tools are small chunks of code which we use as building blocks to write our main program. So we're going to go through some of the words. So first of all, we have to initialize the display, and that's what all this does. And if you look at some of them, 
Here's our mirror mode. If you set that to A0, it will, it will go into mirror mode. This sets the, the contrast, how, uh, how bright the display is. And this is our reverse. If you want reverse uh, text, you set that to A7. So this is our initialization code. And if we type display.init, it will initialize our display. Now next is our font. It's a 6x8 font. So here, here's our bitmap. So it goes all the way down. That's our fonts. And here's our word character.tx. So we give it an ASCII character and we run character.tx and that will send that bit pattern to the display. And this will do it in reverse. Reverse text. And this is where we redirect everything to the display. So all words that usually send text to the screen, to the computer screen, will now send it to the display. And this will revert it back to send it back to the computer screen. So if we go down to column reset, this is where it resets the columns. It puts the cursor all the way to the left. So here we select line one. It will put, uh, it will select line one and put the cursor all the way to the left. Now in the, in the data sheet, lines are called pages so here there it's zero page to seven page that's zero to seven pages which is equal to line one to eight so if you type line one it puts the cursor all the way to the left on line one and it enables line one so line clear if you want to clear a line we just type line six so that enables line six puts the cursor all the way to the left and then it clears the line by typing line dot clear clear screen clears all the lines so this is our main program, so this is what you're going to use. So use this as a template. So the, first of all, we initialize it to, to the display. Then we clear the display, so we have a clean slate. Now we redirect all words that usually send text to the computer screen, we send to the display. We select our line, so line one, and then here's our text. So everything in here will be sent to the display. Then we, we select line two, and we put our text in here, so everything in here will be sent to line two. Now, if you want to reverse the text, we go. Uh, we use this word to reverse it. So everything after this will be reversed. So this line will be reversed, and this will put it back to normal. So there's our line one to line eight, and on line eight I have my alphabet, and then we go to console, and that will put the all words. We now will go send the text to the screen, the computer screen. So use this as a template. That's our main. So here's a real world application. So first of all, we initialize the display. And then we clear the screen, so we have a, a clean slate. Then we redirect everything to the display. We select line four. We print the word temp, then space. And then here we take a reading of the temperature sensor and we drop off the fractional, so we just have the integer. We print out the, the temperature, then we print degrees C. And that's in a loop and we hit any key to come out of the loop. So that's our word called show.temp. So between the main and show.temp, use that as a template to make your own application. Okay, here's some utilities that you could run and they're interactive. The first one is called TTY, that's teletype. So that acts like a typewriter. So you type line one, it'll activate line one and TTY. Now you could type with your keyboard and you could type any text on line one. Here's pixel test, that turns on all the pixels. This puts it back to normal again. Here's our reverse text, white.bg. This puts it back to default text. Here we flip our display, 180 degrees, and this puts it back to normal. We can set our contrast as the brightness of our display. Now I have an interactive uh, word called show.contrast. Use your up-down keys. You could actually change the brightness of the display. You could take it all the way up to the full brightness or take it all the way down to dim. So there's some words you could use interactively to test out your display. Okay, one of the applications where I used the OLED display was my temperature sensor. It was a frost detection. So I have a, a waterproof box that has a clear top. And the OLED display was uh, soldered to the PC board. So I could get uh, temperature data. I could get m minimum, maximum, uh, the battery voltage. And since it's in a waterproof case, I didn't want to drill any holes. So I have a tap sensor, so when I tap it, it turns it on. So you either buy a piezo uh, sensor, or you could get accelerometers that have uh, double tap sensing. And then the display will come on, you could, read, uh, you could read the data, and then she'll time out, and that will save battery life. So that's a little example 
where you could use these little OLED displays. They're very tiny and they fit in very small places. They come in very handy. So she's blinking, so she's going to turn off. And now she's off and it's saving battery power. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on how to interface an OLED display to the Scan3 board using the I2C bus. Now there's different sizes of the display. There's the 0.96 inch display. It's a little bit smaller. It also has uh, eight lines. But uh, the bigger display is a bit easier to, to see. It's got bigger, bigger fonts. So now you can come up with your own uh, applications using the Scan3 board and an OLED display.